It seems the world that once feared ghosts in the sky is now engineering them with surgical precision. Not because they're beautiful, though they look like something Leonardo da Vinci might have sketched after a week of no sleep and too much Red Bull, but because the sky no longer belongs to those who fly in it. It belongs to those who calculate, scan, simulate, and control it without a single pilot in the cockpit. And what's most striking, the faces in this war are fewer than the accountability held by those who design it. Today's air power doesn't look like a plane, it looks like something misplaced between DARPA and Kubrick. And that's when it hits you. This isn't about aerodynamics, it's about proving you can disappear before anyone even knows you're there. This latest innovation isn't about flight, it's about absence. Absence on radar, absence in reports, absence from the threshold of what we're still allowed to fear. That's why it arrives not with fanfare, but with dry lines buried in classified documents. Um, drones can be very precise, very accurate. They can hit the target if you have the right information about that target. But as you can see, the name is already known, Fury. And now it's clear. The silence around it isn't caution, it's confidence. And you know what's most unsettling? This story isn't the beginning, it's already a memory of something that happened without witnesses. No one unveiled Fury at an air show, no flashy trailers, no dramatic filters. Just on May 1st, amid the concrete silence of Beale Air Force Base, the newest drone rolled out onto the tarmac. No rush, no roar, no theatrics. Its very appearance made something crystal clear. From now on, the language of air war is different. No more conversations, only instant commands and emotionless execution. This isn't a flying smartphone with propellers, it's an autonomous machine with a turbofan heart. The Williams FJ 44 4M, the same engine typically used in private jets. Only this time, it's doing very different work. Its wingspan 17 feet, its length a little over 20 feet, top speed just under the speed of sound, Mach 0.95. And that's not just fast, that's faster than your radar refresh rate. Service ceiling, over 50,000 feet. And most notably, it can endure up to 9G of force, a dead giveaway that there's no one in the cockpit. But as a, as a concept, we have shown that we can fly 5,000 miles with 2,000 pounds of parts, for instance. Fury is modular, literally. Its components can be assembled in workshops scattered across the country, it doesn't have a home base, it's born wherever there are machine tools and access to the schematics. This isn't just military hardware, it's an industrial virus. Fast to produce, cheaper than a traditional aircraft, and most importantly, ready. Ready to go where no pilot would sign the deployment papers, ready to act without permission, because the permissions are embedded in its code. And so for the United States, we basically need much larger drones that can fly for a longer time. It has no cockpit because in its place is an algorithm that doesn't argue with command and doesn't need oxygen. The AI inside Fury isn't a co-pilot, it is the pilot, the navigator, and the mission analyst all in one. It can operate solo without escort or fly alongside an F-35, thinking faster than the human in the helmet can blink. While the pilot's still asking the question, Fury already has the answer, adjusted for wind drift and target shapeshift. Structurally, it's like classified access Lego for adults. Mission changed, swap the config, different electronics, different weapons, different flight profile, one airframe, dozens of mission scenarios. This isn't brochure level versatility, it's wrench in hand flexibility. As for cost, for once the military asked itself whether every bolt really needs to be made of gold. Commercial components, a jet you can buy off the shelf, basic landing gear. It's not cheap, but it's rational. It wasn't built for parades, it was built so you wouldn't have to choose between quantity and quality. Now here's the twist. Fury isn't a lone wolf, it's part of a race. It's competing in the Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA program going head-to-head -head with General Atomic's XQ-67A. Both platforms aim to give the U.S. Air Force more than just a drone, but a smart, adaptive, resilient wingman that flies alongside making its own decisions and never misses a briefing. And here's where it gets really interesting, because with machines like these, it's no longer clear who's in charge in the sky, the human or the human's idea. 
Meanwhile, just beyond the horizon, another silhouette's emerging. Not a blueprint, not a concept, but actual metal. China's fielding its own contender. Not in the domain of agility and intelligence, but in scale and quantity. Its new platform is a massive drone carrier designed not to fight itself, but to launch up to a hundred smaller drones. This isn't Fury's twin, it's its antithesis. Not about precision, but about oversaturation. Not about AI, but brute force math. It's called Xiaotian, and while the name may sound poetic, that ends when you realize it can carry 13,000 pounds of drones and unleash them like a swarm of hornets, saturating the sky faster than enemy sensors can lock on. And the specs? Wingspan over 82 feet, takeoff weight 35,000 pounds, ceiling nearly 50,000 feet, endurance up to 36 hours aloft. Most importantly, it operates as a modular platform for reconnaissance, electronic warfare, or strikes. What it does depends entirely on what it's loaded with. This is no longer a race between individual aircraft, it's a chess match between systems. Fury shows how precisely a target can be eliminated, GOTN shows how many can be launched at once. While the American drone thinks, the Chinese one multiplies. In one corner, a clever hunter, in the other, a sprawling swarm. And it becomes clear that none of this, Fury, GOTN, new concepts, autonomy, drone swarms, came out of nowhere. If today's drone can make decisions, fire missiles, and even command other drones, we owe that not only to today's engineers, but also to the early machines that, 20 years ago, taught the world you can wage war without a pilot, with inch-level accuracy. The MQ-1 Predator was the first to make enemy command centers nervously rotate their antennas. It wasn't fast, it was powerful, but it was the first that could hover over a target for hours, waiting for a mistake. Its cameras changed battlefield tactics, and the Hellfire missile under its wing could redraw the landscape in seconds. The MQ-9 Reaper, the successor but operating on an entirely different level, bigger, smarter, deadlier, it didn't just watch, it punished. And it did so from 50,000 feet without emotion, without hesitation. Its use in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria wasn't just part of military campaigns, it became doctrine. The RQ-4 Global Hawk, the eyes that see everything. Strategic surveillance 24-7. It carries only sensors, but does so with such precision that any air defense system ends up playing blindfolded. It doesn't carry weapons because its primary weapon is information. And much of the AI logic inside today's Fury learned its craft from the Global Hawk. These machines didn't just shape the airspace of the 21st century, they are the silent architects of a new kind of war, where the pilot's optional and autonomy is the rule. They made drones not a supplement, but a foundation. They cleared the path to fury. They opened the door for Giotian, and they made the sky what it is today, a place no longer flown by humans, but by their intent.